Hi, I'm Ben Cloward, and I've been an artist and animator in the video game industry for the last seven years or so. This is the first DVD in a series of DVDs on writing HLSL shaders for 3DS Max. This is the first DVD in the series, Shader Writing Fundamentals, an introduction to writing shaders in HLSL. Well, I started learning to write shaders about two and a half years ago after studying programming in C, because I saw shaders as the future of real-time graphics, and I knew that shader writing would be one of the most valuable skills for an artist to have. Before I introduce the topics that we're going to cover on the DVD, I want to give you a quick tour of this environment that I've set up in Max. Now, this is the real-time viewport of Max. And generally, we're not used to seeing graphics that look quite this good in Max's real-time viewport. Well, all this is made possible by the HLSL shaders that I've written. So let's take a look here. As I scrub the timeline, you can see that the lighting is really nice and realistic. I've got normal maps on just about everything in this environment. And especially shows up nicely on these cobblestones on the floor. If we turn on wireframe, you can see that the geometry of the floor is just completely flat. But the normal mapping and the parallax mapping that are going on make these cobblestones look, look really nice. Well, let's talk about the shaders that apply to these sample shader balls here. This first shader is a detail normal mapping shader. And what that means is I've got one normal map that's used for these large bumps. Then as you move in closer, I also have another normal map that's, that's made for the, the details. And both normal maps are being added together to achieve the final effect. On this next shader ball here, I've got a cartoon shader. And what this shows is that not all shaders have to be photorealistic. This particular shader is made for, for a more cartoony type environment. This next shader here is a car paint shader, or a chameleon style shader. And what it's using is a Fresnel term to transition from kind of a pink purple color on the edges to a green blue color in the middle. Next, we've got this shader here, which is kind of a blobby water style shader. And it's using a cube map for reflection and refraction as well as vertex animation for the wavy movement. So when I scrub the timeline here, you can see that it's got a nice gelatinous animation to it. This next shader here uses a brightness and contrast function to dissolve away the object. And it uses an if statement to add this nice orange edge to the areas that are being dissolved. Finally, I've got this metal shader, and it's using a mask to determine some areas that are rusty and some areas that are reflective. So I'm using a cube map for reflection. We've got some areas that are reflective and some areas that are not. Finally, I've also included this character in the demo. And this character was modeled by a very talented artist named Vitaly Nemushin. And he's let me borrow this character to just show off what you can do with really good art and nice shaders. I just want to scrub the timeline here and let the light go around him so you can see how nice this model is. Vitaly is also working on a series of DVDs for CG Academy about creating normal mapped characters, so you'll be sure to check those out too when they're available. Well, let's go over what this DVD is going to cover. Well, first of all, I've really been blown away by how much control an artist can have over the exact appearance of the surface of an object just by writing a few lines of code. A lot of artists are afraid of code writing, but if you can get past that initial fear and just learn some of the basics, you can really do a lot. And that's what we're going to be talking about on this DVD. We can make surfaces that look almost exactly like their real-world counterparts, and it all runs in real time. It's a very exciting time to be an artist in the game industry, and it's a very good time to learn to write shaders in HLSL. So on this DVD, we're going to start off by explaining what HLSL is and why it was created. It's important to know what it is that we're learning. Next, we'll talk about the pipeline on the graphics card and how HLSL vertex and pixel shaders fit into that pipeline. With that background out of the way, I'll explain what software we'll be using and how to get set up for creating shaders. Then we'll jump into the programming. 
In the next three chapters, I'm going to go over some of the basic programming concepts of data types, structs, and functions. In the next four chapters after that, I'm going to explain the structures of an effects file, the most common format for a shader, and the format used by 3ds Max. So in the effects file, we're going to talk about UI elements, input and output structs, vertex and pixel shaders, and finally, techniques and passes. Once we have a good understanding of the framework of an effects file, at that point, we'll create some simple shaders using the sample shader frameworks that are included on the DVD. Finally, we'll wrap up the DVD with a brief overview of creating a shader that calculates diffuse lighting. Now, my goal with this DVD is not to show you how to do every cool shader effect that's out there. What I want to do is help you understand the fundamentals to learn the language of shader writing and understand how the structure of a shader is put together. Once you have a good grasp on that, you can learn the cool effects that are out there just by looking at other people's shaders. You'll be able to open up a shader file and read through it and see what it's doing because you understand the, the language of shaders and the structure of the files that a shader is made out of. And I hope that that fundamental understanding will be more valuable to you than just, just understanding specifically how one or two effects is set up. Then in later DVDs in the series, I'll get into more specifically how to achieve certain effects. But it's important that we understand the fundamentals of, of the effects framework and the basics of HLSL before we can get into those more advanced topics. All right, without brief introduction out of the way, let's jump right in.